Good afternoon. This is Senate Judiciary, 12.45 p.m. on the 12th of May. We're discussing a letter of intent to the governor uh, from Representative Grad and myself regarding the use of force bill S1, H145 and the sections having to do with um, a citizen's right to defend oneself. Bryn, if you've prepared a, a, a document uh, for us to look at, I believe, and perhaps, uh, are you yes. able to share it on the screen or? Oh yes, I can definitely share it. I just sent it to Peggy, but um, she probably just hasn't even gotten it yet. So I'll share my screen. So, by the way, this is Senate Judiciary. We're joined by um, Representative Brad and Representative Lamont from the House Judiciary Committee, as well as um, Jennifer Morrison representing um, the Department of Public Safety. So Bryn, you've got the letter. Yep. So can everybody see this the letter on their screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, this draft letter is to respond to the letter that you received from um, the governor on May 11th regarding their con the administration's concerns with um, H145 and specifically the justifiable homicides changes in that in that bill. So this letter essentially provides that um, there is a common law, there are common law defenses of self-defense and defense of others. And that second paragraph there outlines um, how the court has analyzed those common law defenses and what the requirements are for them. And the letter is pretty straightforward. It just provides that um, those common law defenses, which the court has found um, exist and can be raised by a person who intervenes um, when there is um, a violent crime happening. Um, those offenses are available to be raised and H145 doesn't change that fact. It doesn't um, eliminate those defenses at, at the common law and it doesn't have the effect of um, limiting their application either. So um, I, I'll let the committee read it if you'd like, you can zoom in a little. I think it does what the governor asked. Um, it would be signed by uh, Representative Grad and myself. Is that correct, Bryn? And that's not... how it's drafted now, yes. Okay. And I, I think that's fine. I don't know if they need this. The letter was originally addressed to the speaker and the president pro tem. Um, as well as Senator uh, Representative Grad and myself. I don't know. Maybe you could CC them. Yeah, maybe it'd be better to cart and copy them. So that I'm sure, I'll do that. <clears throat> Sometimes when I write letters like this for our committee, I um, sign it for the committee it, by, with my name as chair and then um, for the committee so that it's clear that the whole committee, I don't know if you want to do that or well, not. Well, I don't think House Judiciary has had the opportunity to meet it. Okay. Um, any comments? Um, particularly interested, does this meet uh, <coughs> Chief Morrison? Um, <coughs> Thank you, Senator. I. For the record, I'm Jennifer Morrison, uh, Policy Director for the Department of Public Safety. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit out of my wheelhouse here. I'm going to try and play devil's advocate and assume that there might be alternate interpretations of what, what, what H-145 does or doesn't do relative to the common law defense. Um, obviously, we want to resolve this quickly and get the governor to sign H-145. Um, so 
I, I was under the impression from the governor's council that, that they were looking for a fix. And I think the letter that you're presenting basically says there's no fix needed. And I'm not in a position to say which is correct. So I'm not sure how we resolve okay. that. I'm a little confused by the governor's letter then, because I, I read it to be asking us um, uh, to, to clear up any ambiguity in terms of the, is that posted on our webpage, Peggy? The governor's letter is on our webpage, correct? Yes, it is, as well as this letter. I, I'm merely am pointing out that it appears they asked for a fix, and the response letter is that there is no fix needed, if I'm reading the letter that Bryn presented correctly. Um, well, I think no, it, I clarified, just... it clarifies, to approve this bill, I request your written assurance that a clarification of intent will be adopted, effective on passage that makes it clear this was not intended to modify the defenses of self-defense or defense of other side. I think the letter meets that test. I defer to you guys and your expertise. Like I said, I'm a bit out of my wheelhouse. I just wanted to take a little bit of a what if there are differing legal opinions approach? The only other thing that I could think we could do is pass legislation and that would have to be in probably S97, the miscellaneous judiciary bill, which would not be ready for any time in the near, well, hopefully be ready fairly shortly, but it's not ready to, uh, in the time that the governor has to either sign or not sign. So, Senator Baruth. Um, I, with respect to the chief and to the governor, um, you know, I, I think there's a separation of powers question here. Um, we went through our entire process. We sent the governor a bill that we agreed on, House and Senate, and the governor expressed concerns and wanted a clarification of intent. So we've done a kind of extraordinary extra process to generate that intent. But if what the governor is seeking is that we rewrite the bill after our committee has already been officially shut down for the year, then I think he's asking for too much. But I didn't read his letter that way. I read it the way the chair did, which is that he wanted a clarification of intent. And this is uh, something that can be put on file and referred to later on. Senator Brennan. I agree with Philip. I think he was looking for a statement of our intent. I think the record has yeah. been established of what our intent is, both through this letter and through these discussions. For the edification of the public, I'd like to ask Bryn a, a simple question, uh, if I might. Bryn, um, the example I used earlier today of the unfortunate woman in Burlington who was going through a, um, a series of injuries that led to her death, I posed the question, if I approached from behind the perpetrator with a tire iron and I swung it, in your opinion, would I be protected with the, that, the bill as it now reads? Yes, uh, under the common law defense of defense of others, you, okay. um, you could raise that, that. That is all that I'm looking for, Mr. Chair, and I believe the governor is um, also looking for that statement, so thank you. And I, and I would further state that it was our intent when we drafted this bill that if a situation such as the one with Mr. Aubrey down in Georgia occurred, where somebody was in a uh, building under construction and refused to, to stop for two people who had shotguns um, and then shot and killed them. That is not um, something that would be permissible under this. And that was what we were looking at in terms of our intent as well. That we're not <clears throat> saying that you can shoot somebody just because you think they're doing something. Senator Nick. 
I just would like to ask Bryn, um, so where will this, other than between the parties here and the governor and his staff, where will this be located if someone some years hence wants to see it? Other than in those persons? The letter. So the, it's a part of the record now. Um, it's posted to your committee webpage and it's and it's now uh, and a part of the a part of the official record for the file, H145 file. So I just have one Alice. yes, Representative Brad. Actually, um I think Senator um Nick, you you were muted, so I was just wondering. Oh. Bryn yeah. was answering it. I'm not sure if I muted myself in the middle of that, but you said it. I was wondering, is that the archives or, you know, where do you find um, legislative intent? So it will be a part of the file in the archives, and it will also be a part of the record um, as it's been posted to your committee webpage, which is maybe more easily accessible for people. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Representative Grad. Yeah, thank you. I I'm still concerned in terms of um, understanding and making sure that we are addressing um, what the governor um, used the words clarification be adopted. And so I don't know when I think of it of adopted, I, I think more of legislation. Um, so I just and I was I was hoping that during this um, meeting. Um, Jen, that you would you would be able to advise us on to whether you know, and I, I understand it's out of your your wheelhouse, but I, um, you know, we're we're trying very hard to get it right, and um, we know how important this legislation is to um, to DPS. So I was hoping that we could get a understanding of what yeah. clarification be adopted upon passage. Thank you. I wish I had more information for you, ma'am, but um, I I don't. I I think that the letter is a, a great next step, and I certainly appreciate what Senator Baruth pointed out about the, the process has run its course. I mean, we were satisfied with it as well, coming out of uh, both the House and the Senate. So um, I think we do the best we can, and if there is truly a fix rather than just a statement of intent needed, then that will have to be addressed down the road in, a, in another mechanism. But I do believe that advancing yeah. 45 for the governor's signature is of paramount importance right now. Senator Baruth. So um, I think if you were to ask the governor, of course, the governor would prefer that we change the bill. Um, and that's the case with many, many bills that we send the governor. And it is up to the governor to figure out, given his constitutional options, what he's going to do. I don't think anybody believes that the governor is going to veto this bill, especially over this particular um, thing that's now been clarified. But I, but I think if we adopt the stance of, well, let's wait to decide to see what Governor Scott would like, I can tell you probably that Governor Scott would prefer a bill worded differently. But, you know, it's, again, it's the province of the legislature to work out what the bill looks like. And then the, the governor decides whether to veto. We've, we've bent over backwards today to supply the record, clarifying what, what we believe. So I, I would hate to see us leave this meeting with a follow-on question, is this okay? And then contemplate further action if the governor would prefer more action. I, I, I agree with that. I wanted to point out that Peggy, it, it'll be with the digital files we send to the archives as part of the CIP docs. We do not send papers anymore. This, <laughs> Senator White. I think we should just make a decision right now to um, support this letter. It clearly talks to the intent and Joe's comment that this letter along with the um, discussion around intent that is part of the record forever and ever and ever is enough to satisfy the governor. And while he can't be certain that it will satisfy the governor, it seemed to me that he was relatively sure 
And I think we should just support this right now and just send it off and get on with it. I we agree can't with wait you. any longer. I agree with Senator White. I'm ready to sign. Unfortunately, I don't have an election. I don't know how to sign the letter. I I will leave that to you. I have to go to my other committee that meets. Well, I, at I one. do too, but I just wanted to explain that my signature has been just provided. Okay. Just, Mine just too. be, th just Mine be too. thankful. Be thankful, Dick. You don't have to worry about Odyssey file and serve. <laughs> That's another matter for another day. Committee, uh, Representative Grad, Representative Lamon, Chief Morrison, uh, and Peggy. Thanks uh, for and Bryn particularly. Thanks for the yep. quick turnaround.